Hi, everybody. Welcome. Glad you're here. Please join me in an opening prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. It's a time of excitement, of joy, of higher consciousness, of wise woman wisdom and clarity and ease and grace and flow. And I say thank you for this message that we share today. And thank you for the difference it makes in our lives and in the whole world. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'm excited today. My topic is your work is love made visible. And it comes from the book, The Art of Uncertainty by Dennis Merritt Jones. And first I'm going to read a verse by Khalil Gibran. And he says, always you have been told that work is a curse and labor is misfortune. But I say to you that when you work, you fulfill a part of Earth's furthest dream, assigned to you when first that dream was born. And in keeping yourself with labor, you are in truth loving life. Work is love made visible. Well, I thought I to myself, I wish I had learned that. Uh, when I started working, because I spent a lifetime as a legal secretary, and I didn't like it. It wasn't my purpose or passion. I was good at it. I did enjoy it one time when there was a lot of variety in one office. But once law started being, you just do wills and estate, or you just do patents, it became repetitious and boring. And I was coming from the old consciousness of well, you got to work to make money to pay the bills, which is not the right consciousness. So there was always a lack of enough money and there were a lot of bills and a single mother with two kids, you know, poor me story. So when I read this chapter, it was like, oh man, I wish I'd known that then. But um, the gift in it is to realize that as we work, we have a choice to see it in a different light. And one of the things he says is that, you know, we do work and we give our talents, our abilities, and we get paid money for it in return. It's the law of circulation. And we go out and we spend it on groceries or shoes or medicines. And we keep circulating the energy. It's an energy and it's Jobs are always provided by source and there's an abundance of jobs. So it's, am, am I looking at my job and work as a passion and a joy? And one of the ways we can do that, if you're not already doing it, let me share first, I have a girlfriend who does this. She owns a jewelry store in La Jolla. She loves jewelry and she loves talking with people. So when she's showing this beautiful jewelry and she's having these great connections with people from out of state, she's not just doing her job, she is being God's love and light. And, and then the day is joyful and it goes by fast. And then she's in gratitude for all the money they wanna pay her for her lovely jewelry. It's win, 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 win. So when you go to work, even when you get up in the morning to think about the gratitude for your job being there that provides income, that they value your talents and abilities. Because when you're, and even when you go into your office, if you work at a desk, bless your computer, thank your computer for the ease, thank ahead of time for the loving people that are in the office. Because when you're doing what you love and you're in joy, you're seeing the best in all the people, you see you make a difference. There's a spiritual connection with source that can get really creative. And masterpieces artistically can come from this. Inventions come from this kind of energy. And even if you've lost a job and you don't know where you're going to find a job, you can go into worry and fear and doubt. But if you actually stay 
in high, high energy. Wow, look at the opportunities I have. I could try another career. Anything's possible. And again, always remembering that God is the source of my income, not my job. And God is in action 24 seven in our lives every day. No naps, no sleep time. God is always in action. So I want to ask you ladies, how do you uh, see love in your work? How do you see work as love made visible? Who'd like to share? I'd like to share. Oh, I'm so glad you, you brought this up. I was a legal secretary too for many years, right out of high school and I worked for lawyers. And uh, fortunately, I was able to quit and retire early. And I, and I didn't hate my job. I actually, I loved being able, the work we were doing was helping people that had injuries. So I, I, I liked that. But there was so much more in me that I wanted to do. And I was really drawn to how can I help children? And I became a child advocate for five years. From there, I thought, I. I want to start an agency that improves upon the quality of foster parents and, and limiting the number of children. And I had no education in any of this, but I was drawn to that and I loved it. I didn't take a salary for 14 years because that money needed to go to pay for social workers, but I was blessed that I didn't. My last year there, they insisted they give me a salary. So I did get one year of salary. After I retired from the, the agency that I started, I wanted to work with women and I wanted to see the women, the mothers who had lost their babies that we were now adopting out. I wanted, so I got involved with the prison ministry and there's no pay in this, but I have gotten more joy, more fulfillment out of my volunteer work than I've ever gotten out of a job that paid me. You couldn't pay me enough for the joy I get from what I'm doing. I'm starting a new uh, activity next week where I will be helping uh, getting uh, homeless teenagers that live in Ocean Beach and into a program. And I'm very excited about it. There again, it's this giving it's not about the money. It's about the, what you feel inside and your gift. So thank you for bringing that up because boy, that's, that's a topic I love to talk about. Well, I'll share, I'll share a story. My first job in recovery was working on a cash register at a department store. They called it the front line. And I was trying real hard to be the best person I could be. That was my focus, my goal, my whole life, trying to be a better person than I was before. So they hired me as Christmas help and the, the line at my register went all the way to the back of the store. And there were like 10 registers up there and they were all full. And I, no matter how much I did, no matter how fast I went, my line was always to the back of the store. And I started doubting myself and feeling like, oh, no, I'm not good. And I was telling people, I'm sorry, this is my first day. You know, I bear with me. And one guy grabbed my hand, which I thought was a little fishy. And he said, honey, we're in your line because it's the only one that's moving. <laughs> oh. And it changed everything. I mean, it just changed everything. That one comment, that one gift that he gave me, all of a sudden I was confident and I was happy and I was moving people through the line and wishing them Merry Christmas. And, and my line was still to the end of the wall, but I started seeing that as a good thing. That means I'm doing my job. They, they want me, they're coming to me. Everything changed with that one loving comment. So even if the people that we're working with aren't apparently loving, I was insecure, I was nervous, I was feeling like a failure. I was not feeling loving until this wonderful man 
reached across the counter, of course, this was way before COVID, and grabbed my hand and he said, honey, we're here because you're the best, was pretty much what I got out of it and changed everything. So even though I wasn't working with love, his gift brought love to my work. So thank you for reminding me of that story. It just fills me up remembering how, how blessed I felt when he did that for me. And I don't even know if it was true, but it totally changed, <laughs> totally changed my world and, and brought me so much love. I agree that it is, it is interesting. You can, and you can even see the difference when you go to someplace. Um, for instance, it's like when I can go to the grocery store one day and the person behind the counter is, you know, just all in their own little world and doesn't really even know I exist. And then I, the next day at the same store, I can be in the presence of someone that makes me feel like, uh, they've known me for 10 years and they're, you know, it's even, in, even though they just met me, they, and you can tell by someone's, the way they treat you whether or not they're living from love, whether or not they're living from their purpose, you know? And, and I really feel like we can do this in any position we're in. Um, I always thought that I had to do the right thing and then that, that's what I was meant to do. I'm really good at a lot of different things. I was a computer analyst for 20 something years. I was, you know, I mean, all these things that I can that pile on. And I thought, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. You know, this is it. And then I went into customer service and then I went into the prison and then I went back into customer service. And, and I'm all along thinking, well, if I find the right thing then I'm supposed to be where I'm at, but it, it's, it's, I'm supposed to be where, who I am. And then I'll go where I'm at, you know and be that person where I'm at. And I can't say that I did this 100% perfectly all the time. I'm human. And I'm like Linda said, one of our other takes that uh, I live from the hard, you know, I learn from the hard ways and school of old, old school of hard knocks or something. But it is, it is good to give. It is good to serve for me. Some people that might be serving a cup of coffee, that might be their you know, their passion in the world and they're, they're doing it. We went to the, when I was in Arizona, the last time we went to this one um, Starbucks and you can see everybody's got their head down. I mean, that pace is pumping. There were people, you know, kids, kids with COVID now you can call in your orders ahead. People can just come and scoop them up and leave. And I mean, there was just so much in, in intensity in what they were doing, but this one woman that was serving our stuff kept looking up and saying, I'm getting the next one. Hold on. It's almost done. And she had a smile on her face and she was hustling just as hard as everybody else. But you could tell she was making that, that connection, that love was there. And I don't know whether or not she loved that job or she just loved serving people, but it made me feel like I was seen, it made me feel like I was a part of something. And I wasn't just standing there, just another person waiting in line. So I know from the receiving end, it's an amazing thing too. And I love being on the other end of it too. We get it a lot as, um, as going up there and doing the talks, people will come afterwards and go, you spoke straight to me. And I'm just like, I'm just delivering the message. <laughs> you know, it just comes, that's what it is. And this is, this is God's work. So, and that's what part of this is. So thank you for letting me share. Am I going to pray us out? Yes, please. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, nobody else has anything to share, then I'll go ahead and take a moment to say, Father, Mother, God, we thank you for this time together. We are so grateful for the love in the world. And for those that some love their job, and that's why they're, they can share love, and some just love love and want to share that way. We'll take it any way we can get it, God, and we'll give it any way somebody else will take it because we know that you are love, that you shine out from us and you shine out from others. And when they can feel that sense of being loved, they are more loving. We all are more loving when we feel loved. So we wanna breathe in that love and release more love in, into the world as we say thank you, God, for everything that you bring to our lives, to us and through us, God, with ease and grace. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you for your time and for your commitment to showing up here, listening to us. Spread the word, share the video. Maybe someone you know wants to hear about this. Maybe this is how you feel or you have something else to say about this. Leave a comment, uh, subscribe, and join us again on our next show because we love talking to you. We love sharing in this way. And we hope you can see that and we hope that you can feel it. We love you, we bless you, and we behold the Christ in you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos and leave comments which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.